folks, Dieter Melhorn here. Hope everybody uh, a wonderful Wednesday evening. A wonderful Wednesday evening here in the south. Uh, it's about 82 degrees when I left the house. And man, that is a huge plume of smoke near the airport. I just saw that. That's right in the direction of the airport. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. If any of you folks are uh, from the Charlotte area, let me know if anything's going on. I uh, don't hear any sirens, but yeah, that's the direction of the uh, Charlotte Douglas International Airport. I will do that, Chris Flores. I just saw your call you later. I will do that. Uh, sorry, trying to get organized here. Uh, hopefully you guys saw my video I put up today. I did a live feed also. So two things for you to go watch. We can do some binge watching. Bear with me as I try to get organized here. Uh, I'm out on Lake Wiley and I chest anchored up and I'm totally unorganized today, okay? I'm just gonna be honest with you. Uh, everything's going haywire. Uh, I was debating whether to come. Uh, I got back to the house after this morning's uh, trip. Uh, had some work to get done. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff. And then I get out here and get set up and go catch bait. Bait was hard to find, but I got bait. And uh, then uh, I realized I left my light at home. So what that means is uh, I don't know how long you're going to be able to see me and how good the light's going to be here. Uh, I'm turning my chart or my sonar screen. Ooh, that's bright. That may work. Uh, what I'm going to do is try to use my sonar screen to light it up. And I'll just have it on the map the whole time. So, anyway, that's what's going on. I'm anchored up for a flathead. Uh, as you can see behind me, there's a big blowdown tree back there. It's right on the channel edge. I am sitting in six feet of water. Uh, it curves, the bank curves over toward that tree. Uh, that tree is, uh, it kind of runs from the bank out to about 26 feet of water. Uh, marked a couple of arches on the way. I say arches. I saw them on side scan. Some fish laid up in there. And uh, that's the plan. I've got some live bait. I've got some cut bait. Uh, and I'm just kind of goofing around. I told you guys I was going to come back during my live feed today. And I'm here. Uh, wow, a bunch of people jumping in. 38 people. Be sure to smash the thumbs up. Uh, and I only ask that because... Somebody told me that there's something in the algorithm that the more thumbs up there are, the more they notify people that the actual feed is going on. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I do know that the today's live feed ended up getting a lot of views afterwards. Hello, Team Rig Wrap. I hope you're doing well. Some of the Rig Wrap easy sinker slides are laid on the bottom of the lake right now with... Uh, some sinkers and some bait attached to them. Putting those suckers to use. I've got six rods out. I'm trying to think of what I got out. I think three of them are Carolina rigs and three of them are drift rigs. We still got a little bit of current. They started pulling water about the time I got off the lake today at about 10, 30, or 11. And my assumption is they've been doing it all day long. So we got water moving. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I'm waiting for a rod to fold over to the bottom, but that's not going to happen. I got something I'm going to try out here in a little bit. Ching! Fire flying a finger. Yes, sir. Those are the whisker sticks. First time I've brought them out and used them. I played around with them. Had to hide them from the kids because they wanted to take, play with them and carry them off. And uh, working on some ideas for attaching them to the rod. They come with a the ones I got had a little removable zip tie, which is very cool. You can put it on. It zip ties up, but it's got a release so you can take it off. So that may be the best way. Uh, because uh, Big Cat Fever rides, rods aren't in white, so it uh, you need something. And I also brought some of these rigging bands that I may try, but I don't know which one I'm going to use first. So anyway, that's what we got going on. And I'm going through my whole little bag of them. I got a whole little box. If you're wondering what they are, for those of you that don't know, they're called whisker sticks. They're basically some little 
very affordable lights. There you go. Take a screenshot. Get my thumb out of the way. You can see the phone number, number there. If I can't see it on the screen. Where you can get them. Whisker sticks. Let you get a copy of that. Screenshot it. Come back to it. Boom. There you go. Uh, but yeah, they're really cool. They're uh, little lights that attach to your rods. And they come in really handy when you're out here and you have black rods. Uh, even though these Big Cap Fever rods have white tips on them, once it gets dark, they're hard to see. So it'll be nice to have these things flailing around in the background. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm sitting here playing with them right now and putting them together. Learning as we go. Merry Christmas. Oh, there's another one. Back here, anyway, a blue one. Blue's pretty. So one name. I don't know how long these things last. I'm not keeping the batteries in them. They come with a little battery and the stick. And basically, you put it in there. It says positive and negative. It's real easy to use. Okay. My kid figured it out, so they're not hard to use. And we're gonna try those out here in a little bit. I'll probably use this zip tie. My concern is I'm worried about them falling off somehow. So I'm gonna figure out a secure way. I'm gonna play around with the things a little bit. Uh, I just got here. Uh, I caught some brim uh, before we started fishing and uh, had a few white perch left from this morning. This morning was uh, kind of unproductive. It was uh, caught some fish. I've seen a couple of them get caught there uh, in the feed and uh, yeah, it was, it was unproductive. I, that's the best way I know to summarize it. Uh, and that left me heartbroken. But, hang on. I'm rigging here as we speak, sorry. Uh, I'm working on my whisker stick rigging. Uh, so I decided to come out tonight. Uh, I've heard that the fishing's been pretty decent at night. So, we'll see. Um, my only thing is they've probably been pulling water all day, so... It may be a good time for the water to come to a stop. Uh, that's one thing, one of the luxuries that we have. If I do this, tape that, that's the thing. Will that work? We'll try and see. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. I'm playing around with some different whisker stick rigging combinations here. I'm gonna try this first one and see how it works. Um, but I'm anchored on a ledge. I've got Deep water within casting distance, and I've got some baits out there, and I've got uh, shallow water up here behind me off to the side. I'm only sitting in six feet of water, so uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to probably sit here for a good while. Uh, make sure my kid's in the mood. Uh, so y'all may want to, like, go eat dinner, check in, come back. Uh, we may just be in this for the long haul tonight. Um, I'm kind of heartbroken I didn't bring my uh, light with me. That could be a pain in the butt. But I do have my whisker sticks lights and those make me happy. How about, how about, let's just see what happens if I do this. It's going to be really weird. There we go. All right, let's leave that right there. All right, we've got 54 people watching right now. Uh, when anybody new comes in, they go, what's that blue light on your face? Uh, tell them to scroll up, okay? Just tell them he talked about it earlier, scroll up, okay? Can we get a thumbs up for that? That's funny. Thumb, thumbs up, come on, that's funny. So We'll leave that on there for a minute. I'm, uh, let's see who all's in here. Whisker sticks, just uh, let's see what all what all did I say? Oh, Muddy River catfish and threw out some uh, some coin. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. That's uh, a fine gesture, young man. And I will call you if it's, if I'm not out here too late. I may be out here late. I don't know. We'll see. If not, I'll get up with you tomorrow. Uh, trying this one out. I'm gonna have to dig my headlamp out before it's over with. This may be somewhat of a boring show because I'm kinda 
gonna talk about uh, some stuff. There's the green one. Green. This is really cool. I can light my face up with them. All right, so let's talk about whisker sticks. Let's talk about them. I saw Sarah yakking with Sarah. Said she's gonna be in my neck of the woods in two weeks. What do you have to see your probation officer? Isn't that the only reason people come to Gaston County? <laughs> Little Gaston County joke. Sorry. Um, all right, I got two of them ready. What I'm doing, I don't know if this is dumb or not. I'm taping, using electrical tape, to tape these things to this uh, little light. Don't really need them yet, but by grannies, I'm getting prepared. Glenn, I saw you were going to be somewhere sometime. Uh, guess what, pal? I'm going to be in Florida the uh, last week of May. I'm going to be over on the West Coast, and I will be chasing sharks. So, And I'm going to use some rig wrap stuff, too, for all my shark leaders are going to be stowed away in it. There we go. That's going to work right there. I think that's going to work. Let's see. I hear drunk people behind me. They're so festive. You ever notice that drunk people are not funny if you're not drunk? Yeah. They're really not funny. God, that made a mess. Now I can't see. Uh, we got a rod going off. All right, this is annoying. This was a cute joke, but I can't take it in there. Uh, probably came on a little earlier than I needed to, but... Uh, the uh, I wanted to kind of get set up and let y'all know what's going on and just see how bad the lighting gets out here. That's my big concern on some of this stuff. It's just how bad the lighting is going to get. Let's see what this has got here. Okay. Uh, whisker stick somewhere on there. Oh, 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 got another one. I have to have a white one this time. Let's see who all's in here. Let's see if there are any questions got thrown in here. Nothing worse than being around drunk people when you're sober. <laughs> Drunk's gonna flip out wondering what the floating blue light is. You need some purples for your shark rigs. Give me those six on our guided trips and the clients love them. Very cool. Yeah, there's a good, uh, God, that is a big osprey. Uh, a lot of people like them. I've heard good stuff about them. It's the first time I've had a chance to fish at night. So uh, I'm excited to actually put them to use. Ooh, that's a pretty color right there. That's pretty. That one's pretty. You know which one? This is going on. This one will go on my pink ancient mariner reel the most loved reel that i've ever owned i'm being totally totally facetious when i say that uh, actually the reel is great apparently the guy who makes it uh everyone wants to kill so let's see if i can get this on here but i digress i'm back to here i wouldn't mind getting my hands on a few of those whisker sticks well if you want some of these whisker sticks the man that makes a Mr. Whisker Sticks himself is here in the feed. So uh, look over in the uh, chat section there. Y'all can talk it up and get all the info on where you can get those things at. Uh, don't know if you can still read that or not, but there's the contact info that is on the card. Boy, that doesn't read worth a hoot. There's the number. Boom. And I'm going to put links to all this stuff in the uh, comment section. So we'll have some, uh, we'll have all this stuff up. No worries on that. What I'm going to do, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to put them on some rods and not on others. I just want to see what a difference it makes. All right, y'all bear with me. I'm going back there. Jack, my life's at 400 hours. I'll have the first battery. 49 unit story. There you go. There's the info. I told you Mr. Whisker Sticks was in here. Let's see.
trying it on the rod tips first. That's my first plan. Where's my pink reel? My pinky's over there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them on the background. You can see that one, that motor rod. Nothing like figuring stuff out on the fly. Ah, the sky. You can see them back there now. That's cool. You can see the airplane. There's an airplane. Airplane right there. Doing a cross. There's the stick. There's the stick. Do I have one? I got one right there. Let's put one on that one. See what happens. I meant to bring some clear balloons and try them out and put whisker sticks inside of them, but guess what? I didn't do that. Imagine that. Let's see. A little more light on me. It's all coming off my sonar. All right. Very cool. Let's see. Oh, whisker. see what it's doing. Bam. I guess we're back. It looked like it disconnected and then reconnected. So I apologize for any issues there. Looks like everybody's back. That's weird. That's good. All right. We're getting into what I call the magic hour. Uh, it's about 45 minutes after sunset. This is typically about the time when if you're gonna get bit you're gonna get bit here let me check out my front light stand by Uh-oh, my bow light's not working. It's not a good thing. You know what that means? <laughs> not kidding. I'm going to have to use whisker sticks on the drive back. I am not kidding. That's funny. Yeah, my uh, navigation light's not working. Here's a little piece of advice, folks. Uh, check this stuff out before you leave. That one's working. That's anchor. Anchor. Okay. Uh, check this stuff out before you leave. It's a good idea. Now, with that said, and I'm not kidding here. Not kidding. Welcome to my world. We caught a fish yet? Red. 
There's a red one. There is a green one. I will have navigation lights on the way back home. So, there you go, folks. There's another use for whisker sticks. And when your nav navigation lights go out, people can at least see you. It's actually good visibility, too. You can see these things pretty dang good. I don't know what's wrong with that one up there. You gotta play with that. Uh, for anybody that tuned in late, my name's Cedar Millhorn. I'm fishing on Lake Wiley, anchoring up for some flatheads. Uh, I'm sitting on uh, the edge of a uh, river channel edge, and uh, this is my first night trip out this year. So uh, the best way to describe it is I'm kind of disorganized, and uh, I equate it to the first time. Even if any of you deer hunt, usually that first hunt in the year, it's kind of disorganized. You forget stuff. You forget a flashlight. If you get your arrow release, that's where I'm at. I didn't bring my light to illuminate it for the shoot. Uh, I didn't check my bow light before I left, so it's having issues. I don't have my headlamp on, and I don't have my life jacket on. So bear with me, let me get that done, stand by. can't see because it's dark so where's one of those whisker sticks to light stuff up with where's the one I put aside it's another good reason to have these things they light stuff up as soon as I get halfway organized here I'm gonna come up here and take some questions so bear with me I hear a rod going. I hear a rod going. Oh my God, there he is. I was bent over in my toolbox. And I heard zit, zit, zit. I don't have a headlamp. I can't see. I have no idea how big this fish is. Some light. There he goes, taking line. That may be a flathead. Let's see if I can ferret out this light. Disorganized, way too disorganized, folks. Oh, he's ripping line. I can't tell what I got. I don't think the fish is super huge. We're in current, so it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> we got a fish at least, right? Right? Let me get some light off of this. That'll help light me up a little bit. I am netting this thing blind because I cannot see. Oh. Dang. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Oh. Loosen that drag. This may be a decent fish. God, I need some light. I 
I need light. He keeps dogging down like a flathead. I seen the sinker. I seen the fish. This is crazy. We got a pig in the net. As Ric Flair would say, See if I can get a light. Bear with me and you'll get to see a fish. I got a headlamp laying right here somewhere. Finally. Oh. What a night. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, nice fish. Came on a piece of nice brown fillet, hooker terminal tackle hook, demon dragon knockoff, homemade version on a Santee style rig. Good fish. Oh wait, y'all want to see it? Bear with me. Let me get it back in the water, or this back in the water. That was a River Channel fish. I'm gonna point this light at me. Let's see if this helps with illuminating it some. Hopefully get a little bit of light on there. That's better. All right, let's get this big boy. Uh, easy. Uh, yes. Nice one. Nice fish. Good flatty. Smash me a thumbs up if you like that, folks. Look at that. Oh, daddy coming home to eat. Nice one. Get a good shot of him there. Bye, yum. Good fish. Trying to get something for a screenshot for later. It's a good one. He'll weigh at least eight pounds. <laughs> What do we do? We take him to the pay lake? Nope. Put him back. I need to get a pit tag gum and I can't get a picture of him. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, I can't. Let me make sure I got video of him so I can get a screenshot for this later. There he is, folks. Good fish. Back alive for you guys to catch. That was a nice one. That was a nice one. Nice one. Nice one. Woo! Holler at your player. Where was we? That gun. That's crazy. Talk about chaos. See, that's just the lunacy. Get that flip over here of all this. Couldn't find my headlamp. Rod goes over here. I was literally, just so you know, y'all might have seen it or heard it. I don't know. I was bent over. I got a flip-flop seat in there, digging around, trying to find this headlamp. 
and I hear that telltale sign. Zoot, zoot, zoot. That was him. So awesome. Awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy. Put a good one in the boat. That light, a little bit of light on them. Yeah, sorry about the light, guys. Uh, oh, Sonny says he heard the drag. That's cool. I was wondering because I had kind of that. Sometimes you get out here and you think you hear it. It's like hearing turkeys gobble. You think you hear them gobble all the time when you're out there. But uh, Stephen's asking, how deep am I fishing and what kind of structure are you anchored on? Well, I'm sitting right on a ledge. Uh, I'm at the top of it in about six feet of water. Uh, that fish came out of the river channel. Uh, it's one of the rods off that side of the boat. That way is all deeper water. It goes down about 26 feet. Um, Behind me, I showed it earlier when it was daylight. There was a, uh, there's a tree back there. And uh, uh, it is back there, that's all I can tell you. Uh, no, I did not weigh it, I did not weigh it. I should have, I think I know what it weighed, but you tell me what you think it weighed. I think I know within three pounds of what it weighed. Uh, but uh, no, I didn't weigh it. Did that one behind me move? I thought I seen blue or my head move. Anyway, keep an eye. Those are whisker sticks LDs right there, guys, just in case you're wondering. There's another one. Was there another one? Oh, yeah, there's one back over here. Where we got them all at? Oh, the other one's right there. We'll get it to where we can see them. Kind of looks like a Christmas tree behind me. But anyway, uh, it's a steep ledge right here. It's uh, Somebody was asking what I'm fishing on. It's real steep. There's a little bit of rock on part of it. There's that tree. There's some blowdown stuff. And uh, there's a real shallow little place right here. So it's a good combination. The uh, river channel sweeps right up to the bank and then makes a turn. So it's, uh, uh, I fished here before. I've caught fish here before. Uh, it can be a good place. And uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, thanks for the, uh, the super chat stuff. I appreciate that. I saw somebody threw something up. And uh, Jonathan, I think you're dead on the money. Uh, it's, that fish was, 30, 32 pounds, somewhere right around there. Uh, they, uh, just not big enough to go, I want to, he's super duper, oh my God, I got to weigh him. Uh, just not a super wide head on them. You can kind of tell on the head when they start to get super duper wide. Sometimes they'll fool you with the belly though. I've had some that I thought were, you know, 28 pounds and they're like 35 and they got a pretty good belly, but uh, that fish is probably right around 30, 32. Uh, Whoever said there you go, Jack. You're, you're. I think you're dead on the money. I, I don't have. I've caught enough in that size range that, uh, yeah, I feel good about that. So it's a great fish. I mean, a great fish. There's, uh, we've got 50 pound fish in here. I've caught a couple of 50s. I think there are 60s. Um, and uh, somebody going to find a boat. Uh, I would love to get one. And it's just a matter of really putting in the time and putting the bait in the water. So. Uh, uh, I think they're around. Uh, the one great thing about flatheads is, is that they're a lot less susceptible to, let me get something here, hang on. Uh, they're a lot less susceptible to trot liners and say, so you can catch them on that, but it just seems like they don't get hacked apart as much. Oh, I've got to get one more thing. In the middle of all that, I forgot one more thing. my life jacket on uh, I know I should wear it all the time uh, a lot of times I don't during the day I should I agree but I try to be a stickler about wearing it out here at night because uh, things can get a lot worse a lot quicker uh, out here at night and a lot of times it's stuff that's totally out of out of your control with other boaters so uh, but yeah, I like to wear them at night. It seems like all the horror stories I've heard have been from people getting hit by other people. So, uh, anyway, the good thing is I'm anchored right on the bank. Uh, it would take a really good drunk to hit me over here, but anything's possible. Uh, 
any of y'all that came in late, uh, I'm fishing on Lake Wiley. Came out here for a little while tonight. Try to put a flathead in the boat. Uh, I've done that. Uh, a nice one. Uh, if you missed it, just scroll back through the feed and you'll see it. Uh, nice one. Uh, about 30 pounds, 32, somewhere right in there. Uh, and we're basically, I said just before that, we're kind of getting to what I call the golden hour. Uh, it's about 45 minutes to an hour after it gets dark. That seems to be when I catch, get most of the flathead bites, that first little part there. If I'm gonna catch them at night, that seems to, uh, that seems to be when it happens. Uh, it's like it takes a while for them to crank up and start feeding or something, so. Uh, anyway, uh, that is what's going on. Yakking with Sarah, when did you leave? I see that you said you're back. How long have you been gone? Tell us the truth. Did you miss the fish? Did you miss the flathead? Did you miss him? If you did, you're gonna have to scroll back. For those of y'all that don't know, right above my head, that, that, and that. Or, uh, yeah, I scroll back, Sarah. I caught a pig, uh, a nice pig. Um, those are the whisker sticks LEDs above my head for anybody that came in late. That's what those suckers are up there. Trying them out on some rods. Uh, I'm gonna fiddle around with them and figure out, that one I can't see because of the stuff. There we go. I'm trying to watch it here in the camera as far as what's going on. Uh, so yeah, that's what's going on. That was a good fish. I'd like you to get that one. Sorry I don't have better light. I uh, had a light sitting there at the house. Loaded up and was ready to go. I even had the bracket for it right here and uh, forgot to put it in the boat. So there you go. There's Bait to Bend. That Bait to Bend, y'all need to check him out. He's a new channel. He gives me more shout outs than just about anybody else that has a fishing channel. Uh, he even has a video where he's watching one of my videos and that's pretty cool. So uh, what's up, pal? Welcome to the hood. Uh, I'm catching a fish. I've caught a fish. Caught one good one. And uh, antique catfishing says your feed keeps freezing. It froze and locked up earlier. Uh, thought I heard something. It froze and locked up earlier. Uh, but it's doing good on my end now. So I don't know. Maybe there's something funky on the internet. I got pretty good signal here. It's pretty strong. Uh, Pretty good turnout of people tonight. 75, 76 it was up to. I think that's about the most I get for these normally. Uh, I know during the week at night seems to be a better time for people to watch. So I'm gonna try to do some more of these in the summertime. Uh, uh, you know, normally I'm out here fishing during the day, but I uh, understand people have jobs and people have to work. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, y'all check out Bake to Ben. He's a cool guy. He's, uh, he's uh, scratching and digging and trying to make his channel work. So uh, that's cool. I like seeing new people go at it. Yakking with Sarah, the stuff she's doing on Sunday night. Y'all be sure to check her out. Uh, she uh, has a live show every Sunday night at 8.30. And we just have a, our, our, before long, it's going to be a show every night. Uh, Monday night is uh, Catfish Weekly at 8 o'clock. All of this on YouTube, good fishing stuff. So when fishing for flathead, somebody's asking, Alan's asking, what rig do you use? Well, the fish I just caught was on a Santee style rig. Uh, I've got some current, let me see if I still got water moving. A little bit of current, yeah. I use, uh, I got six rods out. We had water moving when I got here. Uh, three of them are Santee rigs and three of them are Carolina rigs. And uh, I like Santee rigs and current. They float the bait up off the bottom, flutters there. Uh, that one was on a uh, Demon Dragon style uh, rattle. So if you think that that bait sitting there fluttering in the current, it's rattling, it's rolling that ball around, it's a good way to get uh, use out of the line rattles. So uh, that's why I like using them. I personally honestly think, and I'm gonna do a video on this, that the uh, uh, Santee rig is the most versatile rig. Uh, I love a Carolina rig. Uh, I've got three of those out. Those are basically got the baits on the bottom live bait out. So uh, those are the three I use. Pretty much all I use. I've tried some Texas rigs and some things. Uh, I used to do some stuff like, I think I seen Zach Royce uh, doing something on it where he's got kind of a leader thingy and coming off of it with a sinker. And all that stuff works depending on your style of fishing. They'll all work. Uh, you just have to find out what works for you. The thing I don't like about those is cast them. You can get stuff tangled up. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about the Santee style rig. Uh, it, it's very castable and you don't have to worry 
that much about something getting tangled up. So, uh, so yeah, those are the ones that I use. So good question, good question. I love getting y'all's questions. This is, is uh, I've said before, a good time for me to actually catch some of them. I'll miss some because I'm sitting here yakking, looking at rods, looking at this. Uh, it's a good time to answer them because during the day it is when this, usually the way I try to position the camera. I've got the sun in my face and it's hard to see that screen. So, uh, so yeah, good time to throw questions out. Yeah, Blue River, it is a beautiful night. Uh, wind's pretty calm. Uh, the uh, uh, got a little bit of current. Well, you know, it's probably 70 some degrees right now. Uh, it's just a it's a beautiful evening to be out here. Uh, Rig Rap was asking how deep am I fishing? Uh, I'm sitting in 6.7 feet of water. That particular flathead that I caught came out of probably 22, 23 feet of water. It was over in some deeper water. Uh, on the river channel. So uh, I've got kind of a good covering of stuff here. Uh, I've got everything from the shallows to the deep. I'm surprised uh, I haven't caught more. Let me see if they got the water moving. Hang on. If you ever see me say I'm looking to see if the water's moving and I spit, I always spit in the water to see because sometimes if there's not trash going by, you can't tell. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, there's still some water moving. I think the bite might actually uh, be good if uh, they turn the water off. Uh, it's been running all day. They turned it around at 10, 30, 11 this morning. And Team Rig Rap's asking the questions that uh, I've seen other people ask. I think he's just feeding them back to me. What kind of bait? I've got bluegill and white perch. Uh, that one came on a filet, a bluegill. Uh, I've got a couple of live ones and a couple of fillets out there. So a good little smothering, a good little covering and stuff. With catfishing, does barometric pressure affect bias? Isn't it lower to better? All right, I'm gonna tell you something on that, Dustin. And this is totally my opinion, but it is based on science. I don't think barometric pressure has any effect on catfish. And that is based on the actual felt pressure of air underwater. Now, it may affect a shallow water bite with fish. I'll give you that. I'll give you that first eight feet, but I don't think it affects, I don't even know if it would affect eight feet. Here's my thinking on the barometric pressure and all the thinking and hypothesis and theories around that. I think what happens when you have rise and falls and barometric pressure, I think they're associated with weather changes. And what else happens when you have weather changes? You got wind, you got clouds, you got differences in those things going on. I think that stuff affects the bite more than anything, especially after a front and you have a high barometer, barometric pressure goes up, uh, it's bluebird skies, it's clear, uh, a lot of UV light. Um, I think that affects stuff more than anything. Uh, you know, that's why I think, you know, cloud, broken clouds, all that, uh, I think is a bigger deal. So that's my thinking on it. Uh, may be totally wrong who knows but from what I've seen talking with scientists that have measured tried to measure the actual pressure changes in water from the air and you can get in some complicated math I had an engineer explain this one time the weight of water and pressure of water and pressure of air and blah 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 and it's just immeasurable so anyway that's my thinking on it uh, as I always say you fish when you can fish and if it's cloudy, high barometer, falling barometer, whatever, just just fish, man. Uh, life's too short to uh, wait for the perfect day. Uh, I get very few perfect days out here. So uh, if you watched my live feed this morning, it was not a perfect day. Uh, did not catch a lot of fish. So, uh, you know, came back out here tonight uh, to do this feed for you guys and caught a nice one. Uh, really glad to have that one. So very cool. Let's see if there's another question there. I think somebody else threw. And I apologize. I can't see all of these that come through. Uh, what's your thoughts on full moon or new moon? Whisker sticks, good question. Uh, here's my thinking. When it's a full moon and I don't catch fish, it's a good thing to blame it on. When it's a full moon and I catch fish, it's a good thing to blame it on. Uh, I've caught, I tracked this stuff for years. When I first started my fishing journals, I tracked it, uh, the lunar faces and I caught a lot of fish and I caught big fish in every phase of the moon. There was nothing that I could pack. I mean, I had this stuff down to Excel spreadsheets tracking it. And could not, just when you think you get it, you go out another time and you don't catch anything. So, uh, now, will a full moon affect whether fish are moving up shallow and clear water? Yeah, it could. 
Um, so if you're fishing, you know, does that they not like that light? I don't know. I've heard that on flatheads too, but I've also caught good flatheads. There's a couple of lighted docks that I fished that perch come into, and I've caught flatheads under those lighted docks that have big lights on them. So I don't know. I uh, it's it's not a good reason to stay home. That pretty much that's my take on it. So yeah, don't use a bell instead of a bobber. I don't know if that was for me or for somebody else. Uh, and then Trent's probably asking, somebody asked probably how many rods. I've got six out right now. Uh, and everything I'm fishing is on the bottom. I have nothing uh, suspend, or it's near the bottom. I have nothing on bobbers right now. So, uh, uh, so just a good welder says it blends bl catching fish. And it may, it may. And I think a lot of, it may depend on how you're fishing and what your kind of, kind of water you're fishing. So uh, I seem to like the approaching conditions better is the best way I can know when you have an approaching front whether that's pressure or the conditions in the sky and the wind that come with it I like that better uh, than the day after generally now I say that and we had a trip last week where my son and I went or two weeks ago and it was after a front and it was windy and it was nasty and we caught fish then too so uh, I don't know. I, I just, I fish when I can. The biggest thing I look for is am I going to get hit by lightning? That, that's one. And uh, is it going to blow so hard that it's going to be miserable and I'm not going to want to fish? So, uh, so those are the things I look for. Other than that, I just go fish. I keep looking at my rods. You know what I'm telling you? The whisker sticks right here, here, and here. That's what those lights are, folks. Any of you that came in late, those are these whisker sticks lights, little LEDs. They're made for fishing rods. That's what I've got up there on those rods. There, there, and there. It's really cool. I need to put this one on that one. But I can, for me, it's nice because I can sit here and look backwards and see if I'm getting a bite. That's cool. Sadly, the one I caught the catfish on a minute ago didn't have one on it. Uh, it was over there, but I heard it. I can see where they're very helpful, though, because these rods, uh, that is the bad, especially, I mean, I don't have my big light with me, but my big light at least helps. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough to uh, it's tough to see these dark rods even with the white tip on them. So, yeehaw, fun fun. We got one scooting by us uh, last week right before the rain. During the beginning of the rain, triggered the fish for me. I always got this just before rain. Yeah, you know there are times stuff like that. Uh, you know who knows what it is if it's if, if it's the the pressure whatever uh, the biggest thing is if something gives you confidence to fish then go with it uh, whether it's right or wrong uh, it's uh, that's the boat going by by the way that's not a whisker stick getting dragged down the lake uh, it's uh, it's uh, if stuff gives you confidence go with it uh, that's very important when you're out here fishing and uh, that's something that uh, you got to have uh, to put the time in, sit on the water, uh, and be out here in the middle of the night to catch fish. So, is there any other questions in there? Uh, Reese is asking, where am I fishing? I'm on Lake Wiley, which is in North Carolina and South Carolina. It actually straddles the line. Uh, I'm in the North Carolina uh, end of it, uh, near Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, God, what a wake. Bear with me. I'm still anchored, I'll be good. Here's a tip for you folks, if there's any pleasure boaters watching, you're not doing a fisherman a favor by going by at half throttle. My advice is this, either come off plane and go by slow, or I, I prefer that you fly by me at full throttle as fast as you can go. There's a lot less weight doing that. Uh, there's so many people that think they're doing you a favor by pulling the throttle halfway back and your boat's going through here like this. That That's way more annoying than anything. So, little tip for pleasure boaters there. Remember that if you want to be nice. So, uh, and I feel bad because a lot of people are trying to do good. They're trying to help you out. So, 
uh, do I fish for anything besides catfish with fishing in Western North Carolina is asking. I think you're from Morganton, right? Aren't you from up in that area? Uh, Mary and Morgan is somewhere up there. Uh, yeah, I fish for stripers. Uh, well, obviously I fish for bait because I've got brim and uh, perch uh, before I came out here. And I do some saltwater fishing. I do some fishing for uh, sharks, uh, black drum, uh, redfish, try to catch flounder. Not real good at it. Uh, but uh, mostly it's, uh, oh, what's that green one doing? Is that green one? I'm trying to watch it right there. I thought I'd seen it move. That wasn't my hat now. I thought I'd seen that whisker stick go bink bink. I really want to see one just disappear. That would be cool. Let me just check this line. Hang on. That one. That one has found a tree. <sighs> this is not a fish, folks. Uh, I think I've got a limb on here. I think a limb found my line. Right there, it popped loose. So on the baits, a little brim head. Let me turn that light up. It has a limb floating through there. A brim head, if you can see it. If I can get that back out there. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Putting that one in the river channel too. All righty, I'm back. Uh, yeah, that was a limb. Sorry, didn't mean to. Uh, hopefully nobody saw me winching on it, wondering. Uh, have I ever trout fished when I was a kid? Uh, well, I say that. Uh, yeah, I did, a I did a bunch when I was a kid, and uh, I've went a couple of times since then, but not really with any intensity. Uh, I've got a buddy that's always wanting me to go, but... Uh, just never gotten into it uh, and that may be something I will at some point uh, uh, Trent said they make good catfish bait here that's true uh, and actually uh, a buddy of mine that is from Morkington uh, that fish used to fish out in Tennessee a lot uh, for catfish would always rank his baits as skipjack bluegill trout uh, he always said trout he would always stop at one of the trout farms up there on the way to Tennessee and you can pay to catch fish and then basically you throw corn out there and you catch fish and uh, he would catch three or four rainbow trout and take them up there so uh, yeah it's kind of cool Charlene's asking what kind of bait and where are we using uh, tonight is uh, tonight is bluegill and white perch and uh, uh, the flathead that I caught earlier came on uh, a piece of filet off of a bluegill. Uh, I've got uh, I've got three rods. One of them's got a perch head, a live bluegill. All of those have the uh, oh, sorry, I thought I had something moving. Have the uh, 
easy sinker slides, uh, which I, you need to check out my video on those things if you hadn't done it yet. Those things are pretty cool. But anyway, I got those out on the uh, Carolina rigs, and I've got some Santee rigs out, so a combination of both of them. But uh, yeah, I wish I could show you the sinker slides. I forgot I had those on there, uh, and I don't have any laid out here in front of me. They're pretty cool, though. Um, I had a real good use the other day. I was fishing. I was anchored up. And as soon as I cast one of the rods out to the side, there was some current and uh, the line started sweeping. And uh, I remember what they had said about them. So I put one onto the line and sent a sinker down through there, a heavier one, and didn't have to reel crap in. And because sometimes it can be a pain to reel stuff in and recast it if you've got a bunch of lines out, especially if you're in current. So it's kind of a good use for them. Uh, let me flip this dead fish off of this drain. And let me get a drink. I'm about to die first. Stay there, pretty people. Stay there. Still here. Still fishing. Let me get something to drink. Boom! Diet sun drop. Taste of champions. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm fishing on Lake Wiley in case y'all missed that. And uh, this is the only place I've anchored up. Uh, do you got any type of rattles on tonight? Yeah, I do, Michael. And actually, the uh, one, the flathead that I caught, the only fish I caught, uh, came on one of the Demon Dragons uh, knockoffs, the uh, homemade ones that I put together. And uh, that's what it was on. It was on the Santee rig. And that is, that was a creepy sound. Um, that's the only one I've caught so far. So, uh, so yeah, I've got them on, on that one. I think I've got two of the Demon Dragon knockoffs and then one of the Hooker's Terminal Tackle line rattles out. So, uh, yeah, I only got three rods out. Normally what I would do now, probably after fishing here this long, uh, uh, I would probably pull up and make a move. What was the... Let's see... The rattle zone, which pole... No, Trent, it was not pinky. I was hoping it was going to be pinky, but it was uh, it was actually one of my old 5,000s. It was one of my old ones. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, pinky pulled in, has pulled in a couple of uh, uh, teeners and 20s. So, uh, I put a, you know, a little bit of a torque on it. I haven't had a chance to really max, max out the drag, uh, but I don't really fish maxed out drag anyway. Uh, it's just not really my style of fishing. Uh, this in here. Uh, I mean, like here, I've got those trees, that brush. Uh, I don't throw into the middle of that stuff. I fish on the outsides and the edges of it. Uh, I try to anchor and fish upstream from it with cut bait, spread sin into it. So I'm not really trying to winch one out of the middle of a brush pile. Somebody asked where Grayson's at. He's actually with his mom tonight. Uh, they're uh, going out of town or he would want to be here. I'm surprised he hadn't chimed in here and seen it yet. So uh, what is the name of the light again? Uh, Whisker Sticks, and I'm trying to find. I think I put my little thing. Yeah, they're Whisker Sticks. The guy who makes them is actually in the chat. So uh, he's got his uh, contact information on there. And uh, pretty cool. They're, uh, I'll try to show you one without it being lit up so you can see what it looks like. Sometimes when they get bright, you can't see what it is. But yeah, it's just a little LED stick. It's got a little place to put one of these little, like, uh, I guess you could call it a watch battery. Uh, probably more like a hearing aid battery. And then backwards. And you just slide it in there. And it's got a little, uh, it's almost like a heat shrink uh, that's kind of form fitted to the uh, shape of the battery. And uh, yeah, I've got them. Um, uh, He's got some, like, removable, undoable zip ties. Um, and that's what I got him on the rods with now. But I kind of taped them to the zip tie so I can take it on and off so that it's secure, so that when I go to cast it, it doesn't go flying or something. So uh, the cool thing about them is there's different things, different applications for how you can use them. Uh, I want to put one and I meant to get some clear balloons. I want to put one in a balloon, use a balloon as a bobber and put it out there and uh, there's a way you can rig a balloon up so you don't pop it when you bring it in and I was going to do that. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty cool. 
check them out, Whisker Sticks. I think I've got a, there will be a link in this one, and I'm going to do a more detailed video on these things, talking about them a little bit. So, yeah, check them out. Pretty cool. Uh, there was people buying them by the handfuls at the uh, Catfish Conference this year. So people really like them. Uh, do you ever cull any of the smaller fish for table fare? So do you prefer the taste of the most? I eat blue cats, to be honest. Uh, those are the ones that I eat, and usually three to three to five pounds. Usually if I can get them right around five pounds, I don't have to keep that many and don't have to clean that many. So uh, the meats, the, the fillets are not super thick on them that size. and. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never eaten a flathead. How's that for, uh, somebody asked me the other day if I like flatheads, and I said I've never eaten one. So uh, we have, uh, part of the reason is we have not had flatheads in this system for super duper long. Uh, they're relatively new, uh, they've come on quickly, and uh, I love them. I, I call me weird or crazy, but I'd have a hard time killing one. And. Uh, yeah, I've made channel catfish before. Blues taste really good. Uh, seems like my entire family likes blue cats. Uh, I keep some stripers now and then, and uh, believe it or not, my family and neighbors would rather eat blue cats than stripers. And I know a lot of people love to eat stripers. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what I like to eat. Uh, I don't like them super big. Uh, you know, part of it is just the how old the fish is. I don't know if it's exactly good to be eating something that old. Uh, especially with some of the PCB mercury heavy metal stuff that's in the lakes. Uh, so the younger you are, the better. The younger the fish is, the better. And uh, that's why I go with the younger ones. Plus, uh, like I've said before, I poured this drink and didn't take a drink of it. Uh, so good. Oh, so good. Yeah, eight pounds is a good mark. I mean, you know, eight, ten. It depends on the lake you're fishing. Uh, you know, what size fish, you know, what are your, you know, average size fish. It's like I've said before to people is that if everything is equal, if you have 10 fish and every one of them's in the lake, nobody ever catches them, nobody ever kills them, uh, they, you know, are able to live 20 years, not every one of them is going to be 100 pounds. As a matter of fact, probably only one of them may make it to that size. Uh, and a fish, a blue cat that makes it that size. Not every, I guess the best way to describe it is not every catfish is genetically predisposed to grow to that size. So uh, they're an anomaly, uh, a fish that gets that big. Um, you know, there are plenty of 20 year old blue cats that are 30, 40, 50 pounds. Uh, and I, that's a great fish, but you know, you're talking world record fish that are 17, 18 years old that are, you know, weighing 110, 20, 30, 40 pounds. So those fish get to that size for a whole bunch of reasons that we can't predict or calculate or figure out. So uh, that's why I say letting them go. Once they get above, you know, once you start getting a teener and bigger, uh, depending on your reservoir. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's different for every, every place. So. That's my take on it. Uh, you know, listen, it's legal. You can do it, okay? Uh, but I've said before, legal doesn't always mean it's the right or the best thing. And sometimes we change laws down the road and look back and go, man, I wish we would have changed that a long time ago. Uh, Santee Cooper is a good example. Santee Cooper was one of the greatest striper fisheries there was in the 80s, early 90s. I mean, just amazing and uh, they wiped it out from overfishing. So they learned their lesson. They're getting it back now, but uh, yeah, that kind of stuff can happen. So uh, fishery science is new and biologists will tell you that. This is not something that they've been practicing for hundreds of years. This is something that's relatively new. So uh, so yeah, it's, 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 they're learning as they go is what it comes down to. And they're figuring stuff out as they go, so. That was a whole big spin from what fish do I like to eat. So, but that's the way I am, man. I'll get to yak and I'll get to talking. It's like uh, Chris Flores said, um, I need to start doing reading audio books. Uh, he said, because I can knock out two or three a day uh, as much as I jack my jaws. So, uh, But no, in all seriousness, it's a good way to spread information and get knowledge out there and 
you know, some of it's opinion, and it's a good way to get, you know, ideas and something for you to think about. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, what I say is exactly right uh, on, you know, when it's my opinion, it's my opinion. But it gives us something to think about, and I believe that dialogue is good. Uh, I think the more people talk, uh, the better off we are uh, as far as just getting information out. We just put a slot limit on our blues, 25 to 40 inches. I'll tell you, the slot thing is something I'm... Um, uh, thank you, Bake the Ben. You've got the gift. I like that. He leaves it at the gift. All my other friends go, you got the gift of gab. So thanks, buddy. Uh, and I, I'll be honest, I think you do too. I think uh, your channel, your, uh, I said, keep digging. Uh, keep digging. Do not stop for at least two years. I, I'm going to tell you that right now. I think your channel can go somewhere. Uh, the, uh, I'd like to entertain and see if they would entertain a slot limit. Uh, some of the science behind that can be, uh, could be good, could be productive. And what that means, folks, uh, there are some places that have slot limits on different fish. And uh, they can do them a lot of different ways depending on what they're trying to do. Uh, but a lot of times there's a limit between, uh, let's just say, 18 and 32 inches. You can't harvest any fish in that range. So you can harvest smaller ones. You can harvest... Usually it's like one over is what they give you. It's in case you happen to catch a world record fish, you know. Uh, usually it's a one over, nothing in the slot. So it's a good way to protect fish and uh, uh, grow the population. Did the Fish and Wildlife introduce the flatheads to the lake? Uh, who's that, Blue River? Uh, that's a very good question. No, they did not. They were introduced in the eastern part of North Carolina by the Wildlife Commission. I believe it was the Cape Fear River. Again... 40, 50 years ago, somebody had the bright idea that, hey, this may make a great sport fish. Uh, if my memory serves me right, there was only 12 or 14 of them that were released. And I, yeah. And they started there and they were relocated by anglers, uh, which happens. Uh, with a lot of species, you... Uh, you know, blues were introduced, they were not native to North Carolina, period. They were stocked into Lake Norman, which is two dams north of here, uh, back in the 70s, okay? Uh, that population has done pretty good, uh, widespread uh, all across the lake, uh, but Wiley has kind of outgrown and surpassed it now that those fish... Are they washovers, as we call them? They wash over the dam, come down? Some of them did. But a lot of these fish in this lake were brought here from there, people putting them in fish tanks and bringing them down, and also people bringing them up from Santee Cooper and Lake Watery. Because a lot of things, uh, you go catch these fish, and you go, wow, these are really fun fish to catch. I want to do that at home. So they get uh, relocated, and that's what happened with the flatheads. Uh, God only knows the chain. Uh, that happened. I don't know if they went downstream, wound up in Santee, and were brought progressively back up, but they're in every lake in the Catawba River system now. Uh, Watery was about the only holdout, uh, and they're being caught there now uh, in limited numbers. So, uh, you know, there's, there's the biologists don't like them. Uh, they are, we will never see any protection for flatheads here in North Carolina. It's not going to happen. Uh, we just kind of pretend they're not here. They've uh, eradicated, not, well, not eradicated. They've helped to greatly reduce the numbers of the was it the robust red horse and also the red breast sunfish, I believe, um, and South Carolina, some other places. So uh, they're an eating machine, and uh, they like to eat stuff. And with that mouth, uh, they can eat a lot of stuff, so they can do some damage. So. If it was up to the biologists, they'd kill every one of them. Uh, but uh, we just pretend they're not here and catch them and put them back in the water like I did earlier. So, good question. Good question. That's a, that's a interesting. Uh, you just heard a reel. That was, oh, that was this. That's my little uh, uh, spinny thing on my steering wheel. I've got a Mustang. It is a auto inflator. Uh, get it to where you can see it. Uh, it is the one that is, uh, it also got the pull cord on it. Uh, it's the one that has to be 
submersed in water. So I think it's got hydrostatic, something or another. Uh, I used to have one. We called it the lifesaver. It had a little round disc in it that uh, literally all it had to do was get a little bit wet and it would go off. And uh, I had to get rid of it because it ignited a couple of times. It, this one, you can stand out here in the rain and wear it and it won't go off. Uh, that one would. I was coming back. Uh, had actually been shark fishing at Winya Bay and was riding back in and it was in. We had a thunderstorm and it was in one of the containers back here, uh, one of the compartments, and it inflated. The door comes up, it comes crawling out like some kind of live thing. It was kind of creepy because it was the middle of a thunderstorm, there was lightning, we thought we were going to die, and then this life jacket is inflated and crawling out of there. So, yeah. Welcome to my world. Hey, I want to thank everybody. There's a massive amount of people in here tonight, uh, and I'd be curious to see. I wish there was a way to know. Uh, Whisker Six Fishing. Now, if you were here for the Big Flathead, that's the only one we've had, baby. Uh, how many people are subscribed to my channel? About, let's do this. Let me ask this. How many people were notified about this feed? And just give me a thumbs up or a me that are not subscribed to my channel, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. I'm curious. Obviously, if you're subscribed to the channel, I think they let you know uh, a little bit. Well, Whisker Sticks, I know you are. Now, so Sonny... Jose, Mike, are y'all not subscribed and you were just notified? Okay, y'all are all subscribed. That, I'm curious how many people are like new that were basically got <coughs> notifications somewhere. Because uh, obviously I would. Nothing. Dang, the water's moving. We still got current. A little bit of current slowing down. Uh, yeah, I was kind of curious how many new people they actually get the inf information out to. I'm trying to see. What's the word on the moon? Didn't we have like a full moon recently or something? It's dark out here tonight. I did not see a moon. Aren't flatheads supposed to feed real good when it's dark? I don't know. You always get notified. That's cool, Dave. That's good to know. I hear some people say they do. Some people don't. They don't. Have the same headlamp, works great. Yeah, this is one from Gander Mountain. I got a long time ago when they were like $5, and I was like, man, I'm going to buy some more, and then they were like 19 so yeah, I should have bought more. Uh, Sunny, thanks. Uh, I'm glad to hear you enjoy watching them. Uh, sometimes it can be somewhat boring. Uh, you know, sometimes we get on fish, and we catch the hound out of them, uh, and sometimes I don't. I uh, did catch one good one tonight, but, uh, you know, it's if nothing else I, I like to think it's a good way to spread information answer some questions the ones at night are very easy for me to answer questions uh 12 inch lifestyle <laughs> fishing i wish i had some 12 inch uh a gizzard chat around here uh they are hard hard to come by and i'm too lazy to really throw in that that many times to find them in this lake uh but yeah, it, I think it's a good way to spin. Oh yeah, there's a lot of water moving. I got it pinned against some light. And honestly, that may be the thing that's slowing down some of the bites and everything that we're getting. Uh, sometimes it's like that here. Uh, when they turn the water on, the bite's great. It goes good for a few hours. Fish feed, start you know seeking places to duck into. And then when it's been running six, seven, eight, nine hours and it stops, all of a sudden, the fish are like, oh, cool. You know, water stop, we can get feed. It's almost like a turn in the tides. Whoa, what was that? None of the rods are going. I scared the crap out of me. I had a huge, I don't know if y'all heard it, uh, the green's over on this side, the green's on this side, somebody saw one of the lights missing, uh, it was a huge splash, it sounded like something fell out of the sky, and uh, I was just, as soon as I Whenever I hear a splash, I immediately go to look at the rods because, uh, especially the ones that are shallow, because a lot of times those fish, as soon as they get hooked, if they're shallow, they'll come up out of the water. But I don't 
know that must have been some like something just blowing up on top of the water. That was loud. Crazy. Crazy. But anyway, where was I? I was off on a tangent. Beaver. Could have been a beaver. Uh uh, it sounded like a beaver tail slap. We don't usually have them up here though. Um, I had one one night. There's another river arm on this lake that has a lot of beaver in it. And that thing, I swear he was like getting a kick out of doing it because I would sit there and be about asleep and pow, he'd bust that tail. And, uh, oh yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be like, holy crap. Yeah, it could have been a beaver. It sounded like a beaver slap. So, uh, man, somebody asked earlier if I'm doing the Southeastern uh, tournament this weekend. I'm not. Uh, I am working. Uh, I don't uh, know when I'm going to get to fish another tournament. Uh, there's something going on work-wise every weekend. So, uh, yeah, I'm fishing. I'm, I'm working this weekend. So I'm going to miss that one. Uh, I'm hoping maybe I can get to one of the big ones uh, out west or something on one of the big rivers and fish as a guest on somebody's boat out there. I've had a couple of people ask me about coming out there. And, uh, uh, yeah, I may try doing that. So uh, one of the big ones. Uh, I'd love to fish on one of the Mississippi or Ohio or something. I don't, I'm not a river fisherman, so I would love to go with somebody who does that. I would. Uh, there's no way I would take my boat out there and try that because that's a Totally different kind of fishing I'm totally unfamiliar with. I think Jack just asked, what, where am I fishing? I'm on the Catawba side, if you're wondering. Uh, he was asking on the Catawba or South Fork. And uh, I'm on the Catawba side. Brian asked what I do for a living. Believe it or not, as scary as this is and as horrible as this video is, I do video production work for a living. Uh, provide camera crews for different things. Uh, everything from NASCAR to ESPN, football, uh, we provide crews for all kinds of stuff. Sometimes just some boring old corporate banking stuff. So yeah, it runs the gamut. Uh, with like real cameras, not a, an iPhone like I'm using now. So, uh, or the GoPro, wherever it was at. So yeah, that's what I do for a living. So yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's uh, not a regular schedule uh, as far as when I work. You know, sometimes I'm kind of on a run right now where there's a whole bunch of weekend stuff going on, uh, which is great. I, uh, I It's kind of great. I don't like being away from my family when they're off on the weekends, but uh, it's good that my fishing time's during the week when there's not a lot of people out here, so that's kind of the trade-off to all of it. So, but yeah, that's what I do. It's a, uh, uh, it is what it is. It's a pretty cool job. I go back to Ben, St. Anton, Missouri, Mississippi River outside. Oh, that's right. You're in the St. Louis area. Yeah, see, that's big water stuff, man. That's a uh, ripping, stroking current that uh, I have no clue how to do. River fishing at night can be challenging. I'll be honest with you, Clarence. Uh, that would, uh, that kind of current is intimidating. Maybe I'm just a big wimp, but I know when I'm down at the coast, the, the, the strong current that I get exposed to is in like Winya Bay. It's a huge bay, several rivers that dump into the ocean, and it's swift current. It's, it's stroking. I mean, it's several miles an hour. And uh, that's intimidating current, uh, especially when you start getting wind going the opposite direction of the way the water is ripping through there at three, four miles an hour. You get some really steep swells. And, uh, yeah, so doing that at night would, yeah, be really, really uh it would have you draw that pretty tight is what I'm getting at. So, anyway. But yeah, man, great, great turnout of people. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, this is something I'm going to try to do some more of. I uh, was going to try to do it tomorrow night, but I think I have too early of a plane flight on Friday. So, uh, may try to do some next week. Uh, the weather's supposed to be staying like it is. Uh, and, uh, you know... If you're not worried about getting run off by thunderstorms, it can be a good evening and some good fishing. So, uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to do it again. We'll have to do some dragging out here at night too. I do. Um, first, I'll bring the lights so the place is lit up better. Uh, but yeah, I do some dragging and drifting out here at night. And a lot of people don't do that at night. But uh, one of the best nights or best three fish 
totals I've ever had came at night. And uh, you can you can catch some fish. The moving baits they will hit without a problem, uh, which is fascinates me because it's completely dark. Uh, it's one thing I did not do, and well, because the testing I did with the rattles was all done in the winter time, and I did no night fishing. I'm curious on the rattles uh, if what the difference is going to be at night. So uh, I hadn't really thought about that until now, but that would be that's going to be interesting to see uh, to do some drifting out here at night and see what kind of difference those rattles make. Uh, I got a feeling, I would think, that I should catch more fish with rattles at night. So that's, that's just, that's what I'm thinking unless it kind of spooks them off. So who knows? Who knows? A lot of fun. Good Lord willing. We have a good summer and uh, some good fishing. It'll be good. Notification center, let me know what night you plan on fishing. Let's get that back on the screen. I plan on fishing. I'd like to follow you around in my boat. Jack, I may do that. I, usually I, I do everything last minute. Uh, I'm real bad about that, just last minute. That's why uh, people always want to go fishing. I'm like, uh, you may get a call 10 minutes before I leave. Whisker 6 is saying uh, cut up carp is blue cat candy. Carp is good bait. Uh, for and I wish I could get more of it. It is actually really good bait. Uh, actually, striped bass is good bait too. Uh, you just have to be careful of whether you can use it or not. Uh, where you're at, some places like South Carolina, you can't use it. North Carolina, you can, but it's uh, you got to make sure you meet whatever the minimums are on the reservoir that you fish. So. Uh, I think catfish are about like sharks, elite about anything. When the Asian carp jump in the boat, we use them as bait. Asian carp, thank you, Lord, we don't have them here. Uh, still got water moving, amazing. I'm surprised they're pulling water this late. My plan is to come out here and fish tomorrow morning sometime. Uh, since I won't be out here tomorrow, so I may fish the lower end of the lake. Uh, just because if they're pulling this much water tonight, uh, it may not uh, uh, be that good tomorrow. So a little bit of good intel here on what's going on. Uh, well, cool, cool. That fish is one fish, one good fish. What a night. What a night. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to jump off here for now. This has been a long one, 83 minutes. Uh, almost, it's almost an hour and a half. That's crazy. Uh, didn't expect to go this long. was going to go for about 30 minutes and then jump off here. But it's been interesting. Y'all have made it interesting and thrown some good questions out, and I appreciate it. Uh, what I will do is this thing will post to YouTube. Uh, I will put a link in the description section uh, for the whisker sticks uh, where you can get those. And that will be down there. And if you think of any questions, there was a bunch of stuff scrolling by. I'll have to shoot video of this sometime of all this stuff scrolling by. Uh, if I missed your question, please put it in the comment section after this video posts up. And yeah, we'll get it answered. You know me, I'm pretty good. I hadn't answered all the ones from the day, but I'm trying to answer all these uh, as much as I can. So uh, y'all are kind enough to watch and post a comment so by granny i'm gonna be as good as i can at answering the question when you put it up there so uh keep your phone on tomorrow i may go live in the morning we'll see what happens and uh anyway that's it for now i'm gonna jump off of here god bless you and we'll see you on the water